Alrighty, how's it going guys? Thank you guys so much for staying tuned and watching this uh, fantastic final set between the University of Chicago at Illinois um, and Ohio State University. Uh, coming in to our third match of a best of five, uh, Ohio State is leading up 2-0. Um, how do you think uh, Chicago can kind of reel it in? How, how do you think they, they can they can come back in this in this in this devastating set where they are they're already down 2-0. Um I think it's going to be um they're going to need to get more of a solid team pick. Need something that work off each other a lot more. That last pick seemed like they were more picking for each for like themselves and not orienting it completely to each other. Um I think also they just need to start working as a team more and if they start losing a little bit, they need to not tilt as hard. It looks it seems like they're slowly starting to uh, they start to lose grasp because especially in these other games, like even in the first one we saw it in the beginning they do really well. But the second one or two kills start to drop, they completely flip. And it, yeah. and so I think it's just needing more of like the team needing to just calm down and be able to work as a team and not lose under such pressures. Yeah, hundred percent. And we'll have to see how these bans come out for Chicago. It looks like um, OSU is going to be banning out that. Uh, did they ban their own Corky out? I think Corky was picked by OSU in that first. That first. Um, yes. OSU is going to be bending out the Rise, Victor, and a Corky. Maybe trying to not allow Chicago to take that Corky. While on the Chicago side, they're going to be bending out the Aurelia Soul again, the Kaiser this time because of how much of an impact she had last game, and the Olaf because of how much the impact of the previous game. So a lot of it seems like the jungler is being targeted because of how well he's been playing on the OSU. Ivrin picked up first on the OSU side, seeing more support jungle. Yeah, I haven't seen yeah. Ivrin. Wow. The green father, man. The green father is, uh, I feel like underestimated a little bit. Maybe he's fallen out of the metal just a little bit just because, um, his, his damage isn't very high, but he is, uh, he has pretty insane utility, um, as well as a lot of counter, counter jungling potential, which, uh, McDougal is definitely, uh, prevalent for, especially in these matches. He's been, uh, pressuring, he's been pressuring the, the Chicago side jungle, um, really heavily in all the matches and you can see that that uh, that proof in the pudding because of uh the, those two initial bands uh kaisa and olaf uh, getting target banned away from mcdougall but is it uh trindamir pick what is this um that could be a trindamir jungle or a trindamir top that could i have seen trindamir coming around here and there he's, he's very um strong and fed and he's also very strong pushing towards a lane and being able to maybe even afk just completely beat a tower down but um if he gets he is also easily kiteable so um it's going to be interesting how he's going to use this ezreal and skarner on the other hand for the chicago side is a pretty solid setup ezreal having the poke damage with the skarner still being a little seen in the metal because of how strong his both his stun and his pull is as well as just the surprise amount of burst damage he has yeah, let's see what this final champion is being picked up. It is Malphite. Ooh, it's the Malphite again. Mm, Malphite, solid pick. Uh, it's time on the line. Chicago side. Yeah, ex yeah, that's going to be interesting how they use the Malphite uh, against OSU, who has been using the Malphite relatively well. Um, Makes I'm excited to see the Skarner, actually. I'm pretty sure OSU banned out Skarner in, um, in one of the matches uh, in the first round. And now Skarner has gone... Uh, to Isle of Thighs, and I, I'm interested to see why they banned it out and why they let it through this time, and uh, how how this jungler can uh, can bring it back. Yeah, definitely. I can see the Malphite 100% because Trindamir, he'll be completely countering that Trindamir in the top lane, because the Trindamir is just gonna probably in the end up doing damage to himself. That Malphite's gonna get a uh, a uh, Thorn Mail. It seems like the Morgana and Lulu will be popping out. Those are two supports that are very big in the caster side of things. Tom Kench dropping on the Chicago side for that more of the save my 80 carry before he dies kind of support. And then it seems like Ohio is going to now be picking up their fifth and final ban of this game. Going to be taking the Karma out of play which is um, another caster, kind of mid, kind of support type of role. So it can, t it can target both of them. Braum being picked up on the side of Chicago, going for a lot of protect the 80 carry kind of comp, wouldn't you say? Yeah, look at this Look, look at this front line for Chicago. It's kind of scary. Skarner, Malphite, Braum, going to be uh, pretty pretty terrifying uh, to, to deal with 
Um, actually, I think it kind of depends on whatever this next pick is. What is Cornelius going to pick for his team? It is Cassiopeia. Will you lock it in? There it is. Um, yeah, we can see the emphasis actually from Chicago's side. Uh, I think they want to ban out um, maybe Comus a little bit just because look at the Lulu and the Tom Kencher are gone. Um, and I believe we are going to also do a little bit of syncing in the beginning just again, uh, just to make sure the, uh, the stream flows well and the, the, uh, the matches are uh, optimized for, for our viewers' pleasure. Yeah, for your pleasure. Thankful. Just kidding. Now we have the Cassiopeia there with Teleport. Interesting. I'm just kidding. I know that's not the real castle of Pia's spot, but it'd be cool to see if take Pia took the teleport. Be very mobile. Camille being the other pick, which is interesting. Hmm. Which one of these? The sub. Which one of these are the support? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. <laughs> I support. Wait, no. It looks like... Okay, they have two smites on OSU. I'm, I'm not really sure what's happening here. Very oh. confused. But how about let's not look at OSU. Let's look at Chicago, who has more of a solid pick lineup. Yeah. The Malphite in the top, Skarner in the jungle, Oriana in the mid, Ezreal, and Braum in the bot 80 carry support section. I think this is a great comp, honestly. This is a, they've got a great front line with the Braum and the Malphite. Skarner can abduct one of their chil children from the enemy lane and pull them <laughs> in to the Oriana who could chain CC. Ezreal can be just poking the entire time. That's the Ivern support with Smite and Teleport. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, that is going to end up being in... Ivern, Smite. Uh, I feel like that might be Ivern... See, I want to say Ivern support, right? But I want to say that. Teleport Smite tells me that it's less of a support, more troll... Uh, I love Thai's jungle the entire well, game. Maybe maybe he's more of like he's gonna be more of a roaming support that teleports around, but he also they have the double smite to be able to get that dragon secure and baron secure. And since Ivern actually allows when he um smites things or kills a jungle camp, it drops the red buff as well. He could actually probably smite the red or the blue and give the um buff to his um bot lane as well. Uh, I'm yeah. I'm trying to think of the logistics here. Yeah, that could be a pretty powerful tool now that you mention it. Yeah, Lucian is their AD carry. It seems like they're not completely in the same um field. Maybe that's an I think we should just wait until we see in the game. Yeah. I mean, it is Comus. Comus is playing the, the weird, really weird supports uh, this entire set. And uh, McDougal is their jungler, so we will see kind of maybe a standard jungle start from Trinomir. I'm not really sure. Um... I think the most standard matchups we're going to see is is Camille Malphite and Cassiopeia Oriana. That's that's all we're going to be hoping for in terms of being normal in this match. That is for sure. <laughs> oh, I've never seen a match like this before. No, definitely not. This is no, this is the this weirdest is team I've seen for yet. me. I could tell you for that, but hey, I said Ken's support was weird too, and guess what? That that crushed. So I I'm always open. That's one thing I am in this game. I'm always open to try a comp just because maybe you're just that good as a team to be able to sync like that. But then when you start doing battle flame, I'm just messing, just messing. But <laughs> here we go. Let's. I want to say let's break down the top lane at least. Um, maybe yeah. the jump or the mid at least. <laughs> <laughs> I um. Top lane, Camille yeah. versus Malphite. Who do you think's gonna win? I think uh. Camille might be a little bit iffy in that matchup. I'm I actually I'm not really sure on on Camille's like you know matchups. Um, just just from basic you know ability knowledge, I, I'm not really sure how the matchup works itself. But uh, Malphite with that uh, the ground slam is going to be able to deny a lot of the attack speed uh, coming out from Camille, which is crucial to her auto attacks, which is all of her damage as well as her Q. That auto re reset is going to be essential, and Malphite can just stack armor. Um, he is going to be able to stack armor, but it's going to be a little bit easier to uh, itemized versus this team, considering, um, or a little bit, mm, I wouldn't say easier, but uh, more conventional itemization versus this team, just because, you know, uh, AD top, AD jungler, and an AP mid instead of, you know, a Corky, where it, it, it could mess up everything. That is for sure, and it seems like the only other thing we can think of as we go into the stream would be the Oriana versus the Cassiopeia. How do you think that would go? So Oriana, Cassiopeia is a... Uh, is a crazy matchup. It's it's pretty skill based, but I think it is going to have to do a lot with the jungler presence on both sides of the map. Um, just just off the bat, I think I I don't think 
either champion clearly wins the matchup. Uh, in my experience of playing both of them, um, I have beat the latter, uh, the other um, relatively, I don't know. I, I think it's just completely a skill matchup. Um, we'll have to see how that plays out, actually. I, I, I'm looking forward to this uh, kind of aggressive 1v1. Uh, I'm hoping for some 1v1 duels, Orianna versus Cassiopeia. Orianna is just such a well-rounded mid laner, and Cassiopeia is also extremely well-rounded as well as uh, has a very aggressive side to her play style. So we'll have to see how both uh, players can bring out um, you know, the potential in their characters. That is for sure. And as we go into this match, let me real quick run down these maps, you guys. The Ivern taking the unsealed spell book. So that kind of actually makes sense now. He can smite the something. He could teleport somewhere, but in the end, he can switch those smaller spells out. So either way, it didn't matter what he took. Maybe he just took those just to mess around and he will switch those out soon. Um, the Cassiopeia will be taking the rune that I don't remember the exact name. I think it's Phase Rush or something like that. Um, it allows her to, um, when she does damage, quick amounts of damage, she's able to gain a burst of movement speed that'll help her keep tracking down her opponent mid laner. Yeah, I do believe we are uh, going to sync up this match on the stream, uh, starting at yes, zero. Yes, we will be starting at zero, and we will, I will be counting it down for yeah. you lovely ladies and gentlemen. And let me just make sure our caster's all ready to good and go. Yeah. Yes, he should be at zero now. Just some uh, precautions for the stream. Just don't want it to crash yeah. or anything on you guys again to uh, okay. have you guys uh, have the best... Uh, viewing experience uh, as we can provide. Yes, we are. We have the best public service. <laughs> and in three, two, one, we will be starting up this match. Everybody, welcome to the Rift. We will be having the third match, Chicago versus Ohio. And it seems like they're going to be now spawning in and running to their sides. It looks kind of like that um, Chicago is going to be grouping up and heading towards the top section yeah they seem to be grouping up maybe maybe waiting for a um some sort of invade some sort of uh invade while ohio state's just going to be going to the normal kind of defensive um stance moving a little bit towards the top lane jungle check that everything out from there but ivern is going to be sitting down in the bot lane just staring at red buff making friends everybody else for chicago though is going to be sitting in that side bush on the other side oh ooh, oriana and lucian go to trade lucian's going to get the positive of that trade going to be able to get a little bit more damage from the oriana than oriana got to the lucian but ezreal is able to throw out a q hit that lucian but did not get anything from his proc on the kleptomancy skarner is going to be starting up in the red buff grabbing that early Red buff and maybe heading down towards a an early invade or just maybe trying to make a gank towards the bot lane while the Trindamir will be taking that blue buff starting off. So it's almost like a mirror jungle again. Wait, it's actually a Lucian mid. It is a Lucian mid versus a Cassiopeia bot. Ivern took Trindamir's red. And is heading down to the bot lane. This is uh, some wacky stuff. Ivern Cassiopeia. Um, Ivern with red buff Cassiopeia. Yeah, this is kind of a really um, weird matchup. Um, but this is kind of interesting just because um, Ivern is able to get such an early level two. Um, as you can see, everyone else in the game is still pretty much level one. Uh, actually, solo laner is leveling up just as I'm saying that. Um, I was actually going to say a uh, comment on the Oriana Cassiopeia matchup, but considering that is no longer a thing, um, that changes everything. I was going to say uh, Cassiopeia could have a significant lead versus that Oriana uh, because of her immense base health and Lucian poking her down in the early game um, or in that early start. But spe speaking of which, concussive blows down onto the Cassiopeia, nearly proc, but not Ooh. quite able to get it off. But Ooh, a kill for kill trade down in the mid lane. Uh, I only caught the very end of that, but basically Lucian and Oriana were trading and uh, Lucian dashed, uh, dashed under the tower and got his double shot off on the Oriana and the tower shot hit him and it ended up trading kills. And it looks like both summoners for, <clears throat> both summoner spells for each uh, champion uh, is down. That is for sure. Seems like this Ivern, even though he's got red buff, is not doing too hot in this sustain. 
they're going to be pushing really difficult down the Cassiopeia Flash. Flash. Flash, concussive blows is proc'd on the Cassiopeia saying, what are you doing playing Cassiopeia in the bot lane? Get out of here. Uh, this is our lane. <laughs> I, um, I, I'm sad because the Cassiopeia, I could understand how it could work in the bot lane, but against a Braum, most of her damage is just going to get nullified, and she's not going to be able to. Has she has very low movement? So the second the Brom gets a Q, and or if they get that proc off. Ooh, but uh, sp up. speaking of uh, of Qs and uh, and procs, this Lucian is going to try and proc all of his damage down onto the Orion. The Orion is so low, only a hundred health, and going to be chased down by this Garner. I think the gank was just slightly telegraphed a little bit, but Lucian not noticing fast enough. He's going to have to try and run all the way down the river. There's no way he's going to escape that. He was kind of overextended for this that Orion. I don't think. Um, actually, no, I don't. I don't think it. I don't know. That ward was there. So he, he saw the gang coming, but I don't think he saw um, Skarner on the map. That's for sure. He just it, it was he's pressured really far up on that Oriana, and it's just the Skarner we just noticed and was able to take great advantage of how much the enemy mid laner was pushed up so much, and now is going to be getting farther and farther ahead of this enemy. The Trindamir is going to be doing the Raptors, but he's getting a little bit, a little bit low. I don't know. Will he be able to complete these Raptors, or will he... <laughs> this is an intense fight. Oh, I man. know this. Oh, he gets the level up. Wait, the oh, hell is he taking back? Oh, that wait. Three. Yeah. Oh, my God. He Spinning won. Raise. No way he's going to take him down. Get out of here. That was close, guys. That was intense, guys. I know how intense Raptors can get. <laughs> he barely came out with that Yo, one. Raptors hurt, like, actually. Dude, they hurt a lot. And while while Raptors may hurt, this Camille is hurting even more towards his mouth by pushing him underneath his lane while the... The Ivern is creating those bushes of distractions. <laughs> the bottom. How are you supposed to lane versus us when uh, you can't see us? Or, oof. Oh, speaking of uh, you can't see me, uh, Skarner's waving his hands uh, over his face at Lucian as he takes him down in the mid lane. Another gank, uh, capitalizing off the fact that Lucian does not have flash. Um, pretty smart by the Skarner, and the Skarner is just all over this map. As you can see, he's uh, taking care of those, those little spires. Uh, all over the map, and he's counter jungling to his heart's content. But speaking of this Skarner, he's going for this gank. Actually, caught out by a ward. It doesn't look like Camille is um, it's going to be able to do much. And uh, for the first time in the three matches, um, or actually, uh, for the first time since last match, uh, uh, Chicago has a lead in the early game. So I think it's really important for us to, uh, to see how um, Chicago handles this lead and, and hopefully it doesn't uh, tilt too much and tries to play this out and keep their advantage over the over uh, OSU's uh, kind of weird lanes. And speaking of weird lanes, Cassiopeia is going to try and um, fight Ezreal and Braum 1v2. I think there was a lot of miscommunication right there. Ivern tried to back off while Cassiopeia wanted to go in. And speaking of which... This Ivern is kind of overstaying his, uh, his welcome. I'm not really sure uh, what that was all about in the bot lane. Yeah, it just seems like um, Cassie Peel was just trying to finish up the Ez before dying, but uh, luckily Ezreal was able to get out of distance and did not die. This Braum is doing his best at keeping both his anti carry alive as well as stunning up the enemy. This Malphite at half health now at the top lane as Camille keeps pushing him in. This Lucian, he's being very aggressive, even using his dash aggressively. That's probably why Skarner keeps coming by and picking him up. But Skarner is going to be coming in. Maybe Malphite ulting onto the Camille. Camille's going to be running and jumping away. Skarner trying to slow. He's going to hit the Ooh. slow. He's going to smite. Is he going to be able to get it? Nah, he's just going to run away. Camille just taps him and says, no, bad. bad yeah, a little bit here. of um, I think a, a lack of a presence of mind by the Malphite. Um, I think he just wanted to ult for the sake of ulting because the Skarner was coming. Maybe that was miscommunication, I'm not really sure, but um, using the unsolvable force before Camille uses her, um, what's it called, the hook shot uh, onto the wall, so a free escape for her, um, not burning the escape tool first before ulting, but um, speaking of which, McDougal out in the mid lane, but a surprise Braum, uh, throwing out that uh, that Winter's Bite and forcing Trimpier to flash. Yeah, it was, luckily he was able to just get them out of the way. Lucian's dashing away to make sure he doesn't get hit by the spinning ball of death. Ivern marking the blue buff. Taking the blue buff. Leaving yeah. the blue buff. Ivern at level 6, man. Can double up buffs everywhere. That's uh, such an insane mechanic. Ivern is such a 
He's, he's honestly such a wacky champion, like everything he does is so different, but speaking of wacky, this Cassiopeia's positioning is whack because she is caught in the middle of the lane between uh, Ezreal and Braum completely without her Ivern, and she's gonna Ivern go down TP. Yeah, Ivern TP down to that. Lucian trying to take the aggression with the Trindamir, but with the flash going on, the Command Shockwave whiffing, hitting nothing but air. Oh my god, what a... That was close, it was close. Basically but... an air ball. Yeah, she, it seemed like she meant to throw a cure out and then command, but she ended up just commanding. The Iron Daisy coming in for the Tag Team Wrestle Showdown, but he'll be dropping to the Ezreal. Yeah, beautiful um, Winter's Bites coming out from Teddy Eddie, uh, and Ezreal's um, Mystic Shot being an on-hit, uh, being an ability that uses on-hit, uh, is able to proc that um, concussive blows passive. Oh, but I missed that fight in the mid lane. Yeah, Lucian just dropped because Scar did a beautiful flash ult combo. Oh. Ezreal trying to kill the kill, uh, the uh, Cassio so Pio, but it's going to be got, going down from just minion damage. It's going to be now taking that bot lane turret and maybe even being able to clear the rest of CS, maybe moving towards, a, say, a Dragon, because it's an Infernal. Starter, though, going up towards the top lane, Malphite taking a little bit of damage for this Camille. Camille's trying to get away, though, because yeah, the spin can. Camille of Cheese coming and getting the old off of the Camille, stunning. Wow. Yeah, the unstoppable ult. force coming out, yeah. but the Hextech ultimatum pushes Skarner out, and it's not enough. That red buff <coughs> ticking away, uh, causing that slow. There's nothing she could really do about that. So uh, just to recap, I believe um, mid lane was fighting wall. That bot lane fight was going on, and uh, Lucian was able to take take down the uh, what was it? Leave. Wait. Actually, correct me if I'm wrong. I think the Lucian was taken down by the Scar and Oriana. Yes, um, the Lucian was taken. Oh, down speaking of which, it's happening again. Deja yeah. vu as Lucian has to run again. He does not have flash up, and Ivern coming in from the back. It's teleport forced. And I think that will get canceled. No, she's actually just going to take that and walk to the top lane. Um, but, I think, but I think before this fight, uh, that last fight between the same uh, champions, uh, simultaneously in the bot lane, uh, I believe... Uh, uh, um, Skarner, Skarner flashed, ulted the Lucian. Lucian then was being pulled back, the and then what he did was he then got the stun off and was able to finish off the Lucian. Um, now Camille doing her little thing, hitting, top, hitting the mouth by a little bit, but taking a little bit more minion damage than she probably wishes. Ezreal going to be ulting onto the Cassiopeia, but not doing too much damage there. Lucian still being aggressive towards this Orianna, trying to get as much poke damage as he can on her while trying to push down this lane. But Skarner and Ez going to be picking up that Infernal Drake with the Braum coming in for the help as well. I yeah, so um, if you look at this spot lane, uh, Ezreal is 3-0 and in Cassiopeia's 0-4. Combined score is uh, is 5-0-5 oh, for uh, Ezreal and Braum. And for Ivern and Cassiopeia, 0-5-0. and zero. Um, Skarner and, oh my god, Command Shockwave going down uh, onto the already uh, impaled Lucian. And four people mid. Not much they can do about that one, but... Um, okay, Teddy and Eddie's just taking so much damage from that tower. Anyway, uh, the, <laughs> there is an immense gold lead for uh, Chicago right now. They're bringing this game back, and hopefully they can keep this uh, lead. Malphite oh. getting ulted, ulting onto the Camille, but... at the same exact time in the river, Ivern's caught out again. It looks like OSU has no idea what they're doing or where their champions are supposed to be going. It looks like they've uh, decided to take on their, them, themselves again, no longer controlled by players because they're just wandering around the map. I'm not really sure what's happening here. But the Ivern will be dropping to the Braum and Skarner combo with the Wombo combo of the Braum knocking up the Ivern. But if after taking that Ivern down, they're going to be moving for this Scuttle and Lucian ulting in the mid. Yeah, Lucian uses the culling onto the Oriana. She's going to have to back off. She has no mana and also has not bought in a while. Look, her build is just Ninja Tabbies and a tier. So she actually has not built any damage besides those double Dorans. However, she is actually leading by 700 gold. Um, on top of that, Lucian, uh, actually 900 gold now uh, because of that Rift Herald. And um, <clears throat> for the bot lane especially, the point I was trying to make before all of those fights started breaking out is that Ezreal's gold is double that of Cassiopeia. So she is pretty much irrelevant. And speaking of irrelevant, so is this uh, so is this Camille's auto attacks because, wow, she was stunned up 
for so long, and this Ezreal is just so strong, they're gonna clean this uh, this top laner up. Yeah, there's nothing she can do either. Yeah. Um, gold lead is just growing in favor of Chicago. Yeah, Camille sadly, well, I think, was trying to ult the Ez to try not to let him get away, but instead holds the Braum, knocking the Ez perfectly out of range to allow him to just keep poking her down, and now she's gonna be losing the top tower as well. This Ezreal and Braum duo are going insane right now, guys. Not only have they taken both the bot and mid, but they have now taken the top first tier towers and have just kept pushing it in and showing that their pressure is relentless. And they're just showing that you guys don't want to take us lightly because if you give us just the chance to come back, we will. And they're proving it right now with this 14 to 3 lead. Yeah, as a caster, you know, you, you have to try and be unbiased. However, everyone loves an underdog and Chicago is exactly an underdog right now 0-2 in the matchup but leading heavy with a 3 and 14 kill score um over over osu and uh the presence in this game is definitely a lot more heard than the other games because this bot lane the bot lane was kind of the main focus of the other two matches but osu's bot lane kind of just um kind of outplayed them in most of those matchups but now they're that now it's their turn to speak uh it, it's chicago's bot lane's turn to speak and and they're, they're saying, you guys really should not, as you said, take us lightly. Uh, don't pick Cassiopeia Ivern into us because you're going to go 0 and 6, and then we're going to take all three of your outer towers as well as Dragon and Rift Herald. That's for sure. It seems like now they're going to be catching this Cassiopeia out, out in the top lane. As we're on Brom Chase, they're about to the beautiful Cassiopeia. Oh, seeing gaze. Yeah, pe a petrifying away. gaze, but this Ezreal is so strong. The calling is coming down, though, blocked by the shield of Braum. There's not much they could do right there. At the same time, it looks like Trinimir was in a fight, considering his health is so low. But Glacial Fissure going to be flashed over by the Lucian, but there's not much he can do because he's he's 1v2 in that situation, except for now the Cassiopeia is coming down. And wait, the Braum might be able to kill. Oh my god, the Braum might actually be able to kill the Cassiopeia right here. Can Teddy Eddie do it? Yes. The Winter's Bite coming down, finishing up that kill support versus Cast uh, versus, uh, I mean, I don't really know what to call it, Marksman or something, but. Um, mage. Mage. Very aggressive mage is what we yeah. call <laughs> Bot lane but mage. Camille is able to pick up that kill on the Orianna as she was a straggler, not respecting the fact that Camille was still maybe around. But Skarn is going to clear out that wave and let it push towards the tower, maybe even push the tower himself a little bit. Camille going to be heading down towards this Malphite who has just been nailing on their turret. Malphite's gonna be taking a little bit of turret damage, but it seems like nothing so far. Yeah, Malphite being the mountain is actually the one that is caught between a rock and a hard place, but Skarner is back, backing him up, and unstoppable force going on to both champions. Camille's gonna flash out and kind of get away, try and get away safely, but Impale going down onto the Trindomir. Malphite forced to flash over the wall, leaving the Skarner alone. It's it's 1v4 with the Skarner. I think he's gonna yeah, he's gonna have to go down on this one, but um Wow, five man on the Skarner. And let's see what Chicago can do to uh, to, to punish this this five man roam by. It looks like they're gonna go for this mid tower. Yeah, that's what exactly what they're gonna do. Punishment for that five man bot is maybe losing a little bit of their tower down in the mid lane as the Ezreal start and Malphite start wailing away at this, making sure to also poke while they can at this solution behind the tower. Can they get this tower before they get pushed in? It would seem that they are not. They're gonna have to back off before actually able to finish it, and maybe even just avoid the team fight altogether, since it seems like there's all five of them versus only three of Chicago. Rift Scuttle, for some reason, I think Skarner ran out of time, but he had to release the Scuttle in the back of the lane, back of, in their base. And it'll be slowly making his way towards the mid. Ooh, Winter's Bite and Mystic Shot simultaneously landing on the Cassiopeia to allow another Mystic Shot. Uh, but speaking of which, oh my god, a Glacial Fissure going down, not really hitting anyone. Um, and the shield perfectly blocking all of the calling a teleport coming in from Malphite right now. This is terrifying, a command shockwave going down on the Lucy, and it looks like, uh, it looks like Chicago's gonna be pushing down this mid lane for the win. Look at them all barreling down this mid lane. Look, Ezreal does not even care, tanking three tower shots, uh, and they're pushing down this tower with the Rift Tail without any minions, and it looks like they're gonna lose this inhibitor. Um, they're gonna be oh, maybe can they get the scuttle to dance? Push this, come on guys, push it all the way. Let's get to see the scuttle dance. Nah, we're not gonna see the scuttle dance today. Wait, can they kill it before? Oh yeah, they killed it they before it hit the tower one more time. Yet to see a scuttle dance after destroying the enemy nexus. Is that a thing? What is the scuttle dance? Yes, the scuttle will dance. The, the um, rift scuttle, the rift okay. herald, will actually, if you destroy the nexus with him alive, he starts to dance. Oh. So, but I have yet to ever see it because he sadly gets destroyed by the menacing enemy team. 
the four. He just wants to go back home into his his little nexus house. But yeah, look at this Ezreal. He is one v three zoning this entire down. team. Yeah, because he's just so far ahead. Oh yeah, and and they get to uh, uh, Chicago gets to pick up a second Infernal Jake, uh, just because of that scary, scary Ezreal. And I think he's gonna be buying his his third item. Um, actually, let's see. Is he purchasing it? It looks like he does have. Um, I I think he might be waiting for the Blade of the Rune King five to get three items at 18 minutes in the game. That would make him extremely uh, hard to deal with and uh, just terrifying as an Ezreal in general. Yeah, look, um, he is picking up that third item. So three items, three fully complete items at 18 minutes. Uh, this Ezreal is uh, uh, forced to not be uh, As well as this Orianna, she chased down the solution. Oh. Yeah, the Ignite going down onto the Lucian, but Seraph's Embrace getting that shield down. Redemption not quite hitting either player. And Skarner looks to try and kill the Ivern, but it looks like a little bit of miscommunication here as the Oriana doesn't really know if Skarner wants to go in or not. But just kidding, Ivern get baited. Oh my god, Skarner. Oh, Skarner barely survives. And can he take down the Oriana? No, the double shot, not enough. Oh my god, Command Protect coming in clutch twice, saving Oriana's life by like one HP. Oh man. Oh, but more action happening in the top lane. Red buff plus Iceborne Gauntlet and an unstoppable force. I don't think that was necessary. <laughs> but, uh... Malphite's always need the ult. That is their, their... They are... Anytime you see an enemy, especially in kill range, you ult them. It's just easy. Yep. But uh, he definitely... T t t like, tactically wise, he probably shouldn't have ulted. But Malphite wise, he definitely needed ult. <laughs> and it actually As, looks like a little bit of BM coming out uh, to out of the uh, Malphite, but it kind of it's kind of you kind of expect that against an Iron Castle P a bot lane and the yeah. uh, mid. I'm not really sure who that was targeted to, but it looks like but, a little bit of a uh, maybe oh. maybe some tilt on OSU side. I, I I have no idea, but maybe uh maybe we can see a potential. Uh, Chicago reverse sweep, maybe C9 reverse sweep, who knows? Ooh, we could see that, but uh, right now it doesn't look like it has a team, but a small skirmish breaks out. Yeah, but Ezreal is so strong. Cassiopeia gonna try and use her petrifying gaze while their backs are turned to them. And this Ezreal is just so powerful right now. He could even go for the Penta right now. If he gets the solution right now, he's gonna get, he's gonna go for the Penta. Watch, uh, Cassiopeia is down on mana. I think they could have just pushed for the Penta right there. I think they should have gone for style points, maybe some demoralizing. Um, strategies uh, against against OSU's team. But luckily he was, row. but luckily he was safe though and was able to keep it from them ever maybe even having a chance of coming back. Wow, that splash from that is kind of going to go in, and the surrender coming out from OSU, giving it to Chicago, bringing it back. Can we see this come around now? It is two one OSU to Chicago.